Hello there, my fellow Sigmarites, and welcome to another video about Warhammer Fantasy lore. Last time, we talked a little bit about religion in the Empire, as well as give an overview to three of the so-called Northern Gods. Today I'm gonna continue this trend by making a part 2 to that episode. With this continuation, I wanted to once again give an overview, this time to four of the Southern Gods, Mor, Varena, Myrmidia, and Shalia. One important note I would like to make before I begin is that all of these god videos are just overviews. There is, in fact, a lot more lore to be had on each one of these deities, and I do intend to make separate episodes for the cult of each one. That being said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Southern Gods, shall we? More. More is the Imperial God of the Dead, Dreams and Dreamers. He holds sway over illusions and all the things that are not what they seem. A contemplative god, he guards the souls of the departed from chaos and necromancers, just as his priests guard the corpses buried in the gardens of Mor, and protects the dreams of the sleeping from demons that would pervert them. Mor and his devoted followers are the eternal enemies of the undead, and guardians against grave and tomb robbers. The cult of Mor is not a popular one, but is of singular importance in the religious life in the old world, for everyone comes to the gates of Mor eventually. The cultists of Mor greet each other with a strange salute that involves moving the hand from the top of his face down with an open palm. The salute is known as Mor's Shroud, representing darkness and a symbolic gesture when a corpse's eyes are shut for the last time. Common citizens use this gesture when referring to beloved departed family or friends, in the hope that Mor has taken them safely to his realm. It is considered very bad luck to use this salute at any other time, as it is believed to draw Mor's attention to that person. A cultist walking with his hands clasped behind his back indicates that he wishes to be left alone, in order to contemplate the nature of life and death. Morian cultists also place both hands face down as if pushing downward. This is done to urge his fellows to leave a matter alone as if moot or dead. As Mor is the god of dreams, he often chooses to communicate with his priests in dreams or dreamlike visions. These visions are often highly symbolic, with the iconography of death being prevalent. Ravens, skulls, skeletons, graveyards, and black roses are common in both dreams and waking visions. In addition to his role as the god of the dead, Mor is also the god of prophecy. While many of his omens are exactly what one might expect, a raven circling a house where someone is about to die, he may also grant more far-ranging visions of the future to his followers. Varena Varena is the goddess of knowledge, science, law, and justice. Her symbols are the scale and the downward-pointing sword, representing justice, as well as the owl, representing wisdom. Verena is generally portrayed as a tall and beautiful woman, dignified and serious, sometimes with a blindfold over her eyes, her scale in one hand and her sword in the other. Other depictions include an owl or an elderly scholar of varying gender. She is said to be the wife of Moor, and is often asked to intercede with her husband by people who have broken the law for a just cause or those who are oppressed and affected by injustice. Verena is concerned with fairness, rather than the literal letter of the law, and she is equally opposed to tyranny and oppression as she is to crime. As Verena values wisdom and education, her church is often more positively aligned to magic than other religions of the Empire. She is a classical god worshipped across the old world, especially venerated in university towns like Altorf or Nuln, where there are great temples in her honor. 
All those who owe their line of work to the fairness of the law tend to honor her above any other god. And the most devout of Varena's followers can include magistrates, politicians, scholars, law enforcers, and wizards of the celestial and light colleges. Followers of Varena value reason above force, but are more than ready to take up arms in the name of justice if diplomacy fails. As the goddess of law and justice, Varena is naturally opposed to Renald, the god of thieves and tricksters. Thus, her followers rarely grant mercy to those who use the cult of Renald as an excuse for their crimes. Myrmidia Myrmidia is the goddess of war, and her worship has spread into the empire from the southern old world nations of Tylea and Estalia. She is a goddess of the classical age, depicted as the daughter of Mor and Varena, and is said to have been given to mortal parents as a child, and then grew into a maiden warrior, who rallied the people of both lands against their enemies. She is commonly portrayed as a tall, well-proportioned young woman, armed and equipped in the style of the soldiers of the southern old world. She can also take the form of an eagle. Her symbols are the spear and the shield, as well as a sun with a female face, often smiling benevolently upon it. She is also associated with lions, and many depictions show some of these great beasts resting at her feet. Where Ulrich stands for strength in combat and the fury of battle, Myrmidia stands for the art and science of war, and she is venerated mostly by professional soldiers and strategists. While worship of Myrmidia in the Empire is overshadowed by the calls of Sigmar or Ulrich, she is worshipped with fanatical devotion in Tylea and Estalia, where people invoke her name as a ward against anything from illness to death at the hands of dark elf corsairs. Myrmidia is popular with both common soldiers and mercenaries as well as their officers. Many Tylean mercenary companies adorn their banners with a portrait of her or one of her symbols. Her greatest temple is located in Magrita, in the lands of Estalia, where she is also worshipped as the goddess of wisdom. The great Book of Wisdom, which is stored there, was at one time the target of an assault by the necrarch Norgul the Black. The vampire count led a bloody campaign just to reach it, only to be eviscerated into dust when he touched it. Her main temple also houses the Arch Ecclesiastium, a kind of ruling council of her cult whom all other temples have to answer to. Additional temples are found in almost every Tylean and Estalian city, and in some cities in the south of Bretonia and the Empire, such as Talabheim. Smaller shrines are found everywhere Tylean mercenaries are in high demand. The architecture of the temples of Myrmidia can consist of quadratic or rectangular halls with high and pointy roofs. Shrines are often miniature versions of these temples, with statues of the goddess or sculptures of piled weapons, shields, or armor. Myrmidia is also the patron god of the Knights of the Blazing Sun, an order of knights which were formed after a battle during the Stalian Wars against Arabe. During fighting around a temple dedicated to Myrmidia in the town of Magrita, she is said to have intervened by causing an earthquake, which toppled a large bronze statue on top of the temple. The falling statue landed directly on the enemy general, causing the Arabian forces to flee, and saving a group of knights from certain doom. Upon returning to the empire, the veterans of that battle founded the Order of the Blazing Sun, and built a shrine to Myrmidia in the heart of Talabheim. And finally, for today, Shalia. The old world is a very hard place to live in. Disease, injury, or extended bad fortune can drive a man or woman to the brink of despair. These people turn to Shalia, the white dove of mercy, who cries tears that bring the promise of mercy and comfort. To those confined to prison or a sickbed, to people condemned to death or who are dying on or off the battlefield, 
Shalia and her priestesses, for very few men serve her order, can bring peace and forgiveness, and a promise of a better life in the next world. The cult has a presence throughout the old world, and her temples can double as hospitals for those too poor to afford a physician's house call. Throughout the empire, each of the cities and major towns has a whitewashed temple to Shalia, and even in smaller towns or villages, the temples and shrines to the other gods will often contain a small chapel dedicated to the Lady in White. Several subcults and sects of Shalia can be found in the empire and beyond. In the wasteland and the western empire, the sect of Shalia the Purifier teaches that even mutants can be reformed, and perhaps even healed. In the slums of Talabheim, she is called the Giver of Charity. Soup kitchens run by this sect provide food to those who would otherwise starve, even to the point of denying themselves food. Talabheim's upper classes look down upon this cult of Saliak, when they think of it at all, wondering how perfectly good money and time could be spent on lazy, drunken peasants. Shalia is a goddess who is unrelentingly merciful and sympathetic. As her priests and priestesses are devoted to easing the pain and suffering of others, her omens and portents usually serve to highlight that suffering. Sometimes her omens are not obvious. There's no need to bring a priest's attention to a man with a broken leg, after all. Both the injury and the treatment are clear. However, a woman whose broken heart may soon drive her to murder someone might be a more subtle injury, more difficult to treat, but in Shalia's eyes, her suffering is no less worthy of care. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about most of the southern gods for today. Which one of these four do you like the most, or find most worthy of worship? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video enjoyable or informative? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a beautiful day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.